Okay, let us begin. Welcome PCS members and friends, and uh, welcome our advanced study group participants uh, to our PCS IBS seminar today. We are very happy to host Professor Kong Hao Tu from uh, Technical University in Dresden. And uh, as, as I mentioned, the seminar is a part of activities of the advanced study group uh, that goes by the name of Tensor Network Approaches to Many Body Systems, uh, whose co convener is uh, Professor Seng Suk Lee uh, from SNU. And I ask you, Professor Lee, to introduce our speaker. All right. Yeah. Um, I should have thank for my introduction, right? <laughs> anyway, so it is my great pleasure to have um, also the OPS members and also the, uh, the PCS members. Uh, for the PCS seminar uh, given by um, Professor Hong Ao Tu from Technical University of Dresden. Um, so let me briefly introduce the uh, speaker. So actually, um, he got a bachelor's degree uh, from Wuhan University in 2003, and then a PhD from uh, Tsinghua University in 2009 uh, in, under the supervision of Professor um, Wang Ming Zhang. And then uh, he moved on to the um, Max Planck Institute of Quantum Optics uh, near Munich uh, in the theory division of Professor Ignacio Serra um, as a, a <clears throat> Max Planck postdoctoral fellow uh, for seven years. And then um, he moved to the um, University of Munich. Uh, <clears throat> actually, he shared uh, office with me for uh, one year. One year, right? Yeah, that's one year. And then uh, he became a junior professor in Technical University of Dresden, um, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> leading the group on the uh, correlated electrons and the topology, which is very um, fancy words. Uh, so then, the, yeah, he has been a junior professor there uh, since then. So um, actually his research, I would say, that is really kind of unique because um, some people focus on numeric, some people focus on analytics. But actually, he is the, um, only one of the few persons that can do both. So um, as the title says, actually, um, he has been connecting the uh, many interesting ideas from the field theory, especially the conformal field theory, and also the numerical methods using the tensor networks. So um, I'm always uh, pleased by what he's uh, talking about. And also, just let me finish the um, uh, this introduction by the, the 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 phrase he told me, which has been impressing me uh, since then. So actually, what he told me was that if something works, uh, it should be simple. So I think it would be a really good say. Um, it should be golden rule for all theories. So it, it, it may just be um, biased to make things more complicated to solve the problems, but the um, yeah, I, I think the, uh, we should also try to simplify our theory to make things work. Yeah. Okay, then when you present that there, because the camera is... Ah, okay. Yeah, sure. All right, okay. so it's over to Hong Wang. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I really appreciate your kind uh, introduction. And of course, first of, first of all, I would like to thank uh, yeah. Kung Yu and uh, and uh, for inviting me and for giving me this opportunity to share our recent result here at this uh, wonderful play. And uh, I'm going to talk about client property function and test networks. And I hope that after this talk, you will be convinced that it's quite simple and might be useful in your numerical uh, simulations. Okay, so let me start. It's not working. Okay. Could you this? No. Sounds not working. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so let me start. So, uh, well, many of us are working on uh, phase transfer phase, phases and phase transitions. So, this is probably one of the most uh, exciting areas in physics. So, uh, physics, physical systems at and uh, near criticality are very interesting because, well, this is the so called uh, scaling limits. They are interesting because uh, the physical behaviors do 
not depend on microscopic details, and therefore we expect some uh, universal behavior. And uh, these are often amenable to uh, fair theory descriptions. And uh, one of the simplest example that uh, all of you probably know is uh, this uh, two-dimensional classical easing model. So we have, a, for example, here a square lattice, and each side we have a classical easing spin with uh, two uh, choices. So sigma is a spin and can be plus or minus one, and they interact via a nearest neighbor easing interaction. And beta here is the inverse temperature, and then we sum over all possible configurations, and this defines the position function. And uh, here, this model, of course, has a long history. So uh, in the 1940s, uh, Octavio solved this model exactly, and uh, on C and Young calculated the spontaneous maximization. And uh, well, so many important uh, physicists have contributed to this uh, development. And actually, even only uh, not too long ago, I think 10, roughly 10 years ago, it was uh, the Kapomo uh, symmetry, the Kapomo wave theory has been rigorously proved by uh, Spirnov. Uh, and this was uh, work, uh, this. Uh, because of this work, it was awarded uh, the first prize in mathematics. And uh, well, so by now we all know that there's a phase transition in two dimension and in two dimensions, and at a certain temperature, beta C, the system is uh, critical, and below this uh, temperature, well, beta is the inverse temperature. So below this uh, temperature, the system is uh, has a magnetic order due to a spontaneous uh, breaking of symmetry, and at a higher temperature. The system is in a paramagnetic and at the particular temp transition temperature, the, the this model is described by the so-called uh, easing conformal theory. And uh, for us, we are studying much more complicated models, and which are also not exactly solvable. And one of the <coughs> outstanding question is. For a given model, how do we identify which uh, fear theory describes uh, this uh, microscopic model? Okay, so uh, well, so for us doing numerics, it, we also often only get uh, partial information. So, for example, you calculate, uh, calculate, for example, correlation function, and you get some exponents, and then you compare this with some uh, known fear theory, and then you make a guess. And often this information is not complete, and uh, then you could uh, find out the most probable uh, field theory describing this uh, model. And uh, this is really like a blind people touching an elephant. And of course, you touch uh, different parts, then you may get a uh, complete uh, understanding. OK, so uh, well, so the situation is much uh, simpler in two dimensions. Here, by two dimensions, I mean two-dimensional classical statistical models or one-dimensional quantum uh, system at the final temperature or zero temperature. So uh, in these cases, uh, the situation is much simpler. And the reason is that uh, we have much better understanding of uh, field theories in two dimensions. And uh, for two-dimensional two systems, if it's really at criticality, then uh, it's a conformal invariant. And then for conformal field theories in two dimensions, we have a uh, very powerful uh, outbreak methods. And actually, uh, it allows us to classify certain uh, conformal field theories. And if we are doing numerics, probably the first thing you would like to know is the so-called uh, central charge of this uh, conformal field theory. So at least if you see central charge is equal to one half, then there's no other choice. And But of course, it could be more complicated and uh, you have uh, multiple choices if you get the central charge alone. And one way of getting the central charge in numerics is to use the celebrated results by uh, Applick and uh, Blöte and co-workers. And if you imagine that, if you consider a two-dimensional uh, lattice model, so here let's uh, think about the two-dimensional classical statistical model, and with lens Lx and Ly in both directions, and we just impose the boundary condition in two, in two uh, directions just for simplicity. And uh, if you take the limit Lx is much larger than Ly, then actually the Cartesian function, if you take the log, so basically the free energy, then you have a nice result predicted by conformal theory. So first, uh, the first piece, this is uh, not universal. So this is like the free energy per site. So this depends on microscopic uh, models. But the second term, it depends on the ratio of Lx and Ly. This part is uh, actually universal. 
Of course, here I have uh, used the simplification that the model is a rotationally invariant in two dimensions just to make it simple. Otherwise, I would have an additional uh, scale factor here. Okay, this piece, we have the prefactor, which is a pi times C divided by six. So here we see that C central charge is included in this expression. And if it's a quantum model, then you just have to uh, think about the quantum chain is defined along the X direction and the Y direction is the imaginary time direction. And uh, this is the, just a quarterized uh, partition function for quantum chain at the uh, final temperature. And LY is replaced by inverse temperature time times uh, the velocity of the of your capital sex stations in one dimension. Okay, so then uh, here using this formula it's possible to extract the central charge. But as I said, central charge is often not uh, enough for pin down the CFD. And uh, well, one famous example for us is the C equal to one free boson CFD with a so certain compactification radius. And in kind of smatter context, this is all often uh, referred to as the Lattinger liquid. And then, of course, you have a one Lattinger parameter, which is uh, which uh, is another parameter defining uh, the theory. And of course, you may say, okay, so if central charge is smaller than one, we have the so-called uh, minimum model, and uh, then you have a unique CFD. But still, there's the complication that. Uh, with the same central charge, for example, C equal to four divided by five, then you have a pause, but uh, then you have uh, still two possibility. One is uh, the modular invariant, the partition function is diagonal or off diagonal. So uh, central charge is often not in, enough for pin down the CFT. So this uh, brings me to the introduction of the slide bottom partition function. And uh, one reason I have been doing this is I would like to have some. Uh, Universal quantity, which helps you to uh, distinguish different uh, critical theories, and while well, you have the central charge, and together with another universal quantity, then perhaps you can uh, refine your uh, guess of the possible uh, theories. And uh, well, Clyde quantity function is uh, actually very simple. So you have the uh, two dimensional lattice model, for example, and if it's a classical statistical model, then what you have to do is to modify the boundary recognition of the sorrows, the periodic boundary recognition. So along the x direction, it's periodic. So this dashed lines, so these are connected. And but along the y direction here, imagine that this is the boundary. But of course, line bottom doesn't really have a boundary. But uh, let's just uh, choose this uh, row, and uh, then we connect this one with uh, this thing. So. Meaning that if it's a lattice model, then this easing spin would interact with this easing spin. And it's like uh, introducing an extra uh, reflection uh, on a lattice at a certain row. Just insert this uh, in your partition function, and uh, this is the blind bottom function on the lattice. Yeah. And is it important that you use just one line or perhaps just spread it over the lattice? Uh, just one, just one line. And uh, there is a geometric reason. So Imagine that you don't connect uh, this, uh, you don't introduce periodic boundary condition along the x direction. So you just introduce one twist and go back. That's a reproduce uh, script. And uh, then additionally, you do the x direction, then that this will become the climb bottom. So you don't want to introduce many uh, twists in a given. Yeah. Okay, so quite simple, just a kind of a boundary condition like uh, stuff in classical statistical model. And one interesting result is that uh, I have uh, found that if you calculate the partition function in this geometry and uh, then in the CFD uh, framework, you can actually calculate this as well. So here, the first piece is still this uh, non-universal part. So, but uh, if we have the same area, then you expect that the per side uh, Free energy is the same as what you would get for the, uh, uh, for the torus case. And the second piece is uh, already different. So six is replaced by 24. And uh, then the most interesting part is that uh, there is one uh, constant uh, contribution. So because this is the free energy, so this part of we call it uh, entropy because it's a constant correction to the free energy. And uh, well, so I will explain uh, the meaning of this uh, the reason why you get these uh, terms uh, without a detailed uh, conformal theory proof, and there are some uh, simple arguments. And uh, 
this is uh, quite simple, and I want to first give you some uh, examples. So here, this log k, I would like to argue that this part is actually universal, and it helps you to distinguish uh, different uh, critical theories. And one example is uh, this uh, C equal to one, central charge C equal to one, compact, compactified boson CFT. So in this case, K is just equal to R. R is the so-called compactification radius of uh, of uh, free boson CFT. So immediately you get the uh, compactification radius and uh, you can pin down the uh, responding free boson CFT or equivalently the Lattinger parameter. And uh, for the easing CFG, this K is also quite interesting. It's just a two plus for two divided by two. So this is actually belongs to a special family of uh, so-called uh, rational form of a theory where you only have a finite number of uh, primary fields. So in that case, uh, this is uh, in a more general case, this would be just a sum over some quantum dimensions of the uh, primary fields divided by the total quantum dimension. So for the easing CFG, you would have uh, three primary fields. So identity, sigma and psi, identity and psi have uh, quantum dimension, so G equal to one, and uh, the sigma fields has a uh, quantum dimension uh, square root of two. So total quantum dimension is two, so then you get this uh, number. And of course, for other CFTs, you just plug in this uh, formula, plug in the numbers and get this uh, universal K. Yeah. Uh, does this argument work only for the link? LX is much shorter. Yes, this only works in that limit. I see. Yeah. But uh, this actually gives uh, some simplifications in numerics. I will show that. Okay, so this is uh, the uh, field theory results. And of course, in uh, the statistical physics community, people have calculated such kind of uh, partition function, for example, for easy model defined on a Klein bottle, and uh, they it was it's it can also be solved exactly and uh, I didn't know the motivation of doing this but uh, probably they saw that this can be uh, solved uh, exactly but uh, they didn't realize uh, there are some interesting information hidden in this uh, in this uh, line bottle uh, partition function. Okay, so then uh, if you compare this uh, two uh, uh, results so for the Porous case, we have this uh, this uh, formula, and uh, for the Klein bottle, we have this one, and you just compare this two. And here, of course, you can extract this from numerics, but uh, the nice thing is that you can compare two formulas and to get a nice result. So here, if you compare this two, and uh, first piece, the non-universal part, of course, uh, we would like to cancel that out, but the second part is not easy to cancel because they are different, but one trick is that you can replace this uh, Lx by 2x and Ly by Ly half. Then here, this piece would become uh, the same one as here. So I would get a six here. Then this piece is unchanged because the area is uh, the same. So the nice thing is that if you subtract this uh, two free energies, then basically you just get uh, this extra log k. And, uh, this means that the difference of these two is just, uh, well, if you use this uh, two Lx and Ly, Ly half, then you just uh, get this piece, but of course you have uh, extra corrections. And here I just take the limit Lx goes to infinite to cancel out this uh, uh, extra final size corrections to suppress uh, and to get this uh, K directly. And uh, this is actually a very interesting result because here you see that right hand side actually it depends on the system size Ly, but left hand side is a universal number. So it means that you can calculate the right hand side for different uh, system size Ly and you get the same number. And, uh, and uh, here, before uh, giving an uh, argument why this formula holds, I want to first show you some uh, numerical results for some. Uh, so for benchmark, so uh, if you are interested in the numerical application. And uh, this example is the two-dimensional classical Q-state uh, clock model. So I think uh, all of you probably uh, know this model. So just uh, your neighbor interaction, each side, there's an angle and uh, it would be two pi times uh, integer divided by Q and Q would be uh, two. If Q is two, then you only have two choices. So just, uh, uh, easing spin. So if Q equal to three, then you have uh, three choices. So Z3 pos. So in this, for these two cases, of course, the model can be solved exactly. And if you calculate 
this uh, 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 ratio of two protein function. And of course, here you may choose your own uh, method, like uh, for Monte Carlo, it's very easy to do that because it's a uh, uh, protein function ratio. And for tensor network, I will also show that uh, this can be uh, formulated in a very nice way. You just need the basically the leading eigenvector transfer matrix. Okay, so here this calculation is done uh, using uh, tensor networks, and we are considering infinite uh, LX limits, and you calculate this uh, partition function ratio for different uh, LY, and then we see that at the critical point, so this uh, point, this this is the transition point of the easy model. Then you see that indeed all curves uh, they cross at the same point, and Horizontally, this value, so two plus for two divided by two, so that's the number uh, predicted by CFT. So they all cross uh, the same point. So this indicates that the prediction is uh, correct. And uh, then also for pause, we have uh, similar uh, results, but of course the uh, ratio here is uh, different. So this is uh, also predicted by the Z3 um, pause uh, CFT and uh, the critical for the critical points, they also uh, cross the same point. So somehow similar to the in the ratio uh, type uh, calculation in statistical physics. Okay, so this is the numerical results, and of course I also want to show uh, a more complicated case where the model cannot be solved exactly. So let's say if you just uh, take the same model, but uh, then with Q. So Q equal to four is not that interesting because it's equivalent to copies of uh, easy model. But if Q is larger or equal to five, then actually it's interesting because at an intermediate uh, temperature range, there is a BKG phase or critical phase where the correlation function decays uh, algebraically. And uh, then actually at, uh, at uh, two temperature, at two temperatures, actually you have, uh, two, well, it's expected to have uh, two uh, BKG uh, transitions. And uh, then in this region, it's actually described by, described by the so-called uh, C equal to one compact by boson CFT, but the bosonic the boson radius would depends on the microscopic parameter T. So, and uh, actually we don't know the exact solution for this uh, compact, uh, compactification radius. And uh, in traditional method, I would expect that you have to calculate either correlation function and get the exponent. Or you calculate the uh, spectrum of the transfer matrix and we extract this uh, radius. But here, this uh, in this approach, you can just calculate that by the uh, 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 function ratio, which is just one run. And of course, you have to run that for different temperature. But uh, still, I think that's uh, quite simple. And uh, we maybe we just uh, consider this uh, uh, pink curve. So that corresponds to Q equal to eight. And then you see that, okay, for this uh, range of uh, temperature, then all curves for different uh, system size LY, they collapse on the same uh, line. So then this uh, K just gives you this uh, bosonic uh, uh, boson radius. And of course, at the two transition temperatures, so here this uh, is the expected uh, KT transition point, and uh, there's another one here. And uh, according to field theory, this would be the expected values, but uh, here we see that there are some uh, deviations, and uh, this is not really surprising because at two KT uh, transition points, actually they are not uh, ideal uh, couple of field theories because of the presence of uh, marginal operators. And at the present stage, uh, it's still unclear how this uh, marginal curve affects uh, climate entropy. So this is a ratio, but uh, this is a, a task to be done uh, in the future in future works. Okay, so here probably one could. Uh, See that for second order phase transitions, uh, this uh, crossing of uh, at one point that's uh, quite sharp. But for KT transition, it's still a bit uh, hard. But uh, if it's uh, far from not too close to the KT transition, the collapse of curves is still quite uh, transparent, and you get the radius uh, immediately. Okay, so uh, <laughs> yes, question. Could you explain how to implement? Yeah, that will come in the next few slides. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I just I decided to first show the numerical results and then I want to give you some arguments why it works without uh, detail, without uh, uh, CFT derivations. 
and well, with a little bit of uh, safety derivations. So the idea of uh, doing it in Tencent work is as follows, so as you uh, already asked. So here, line bottle can be understood from the so-called uh, cross cap overlap. And uh, the way of thinking about this uh, partition function is, okay, so along the X direction is uh, long, but uh, along the Y direction is, uh, is short. So at least finite. And the way of understanding this is first, we define the transfer matrix along this, uh, along the y direction so it's a well it's a periodic so that's a finite uh, circle and uh, in principle you want to diagonalize this and uh, the partition function on the torus or periodic boundary recognition would be just a trace uh, this uh, transfer matrix you just uh, repeat, uh, repeat this uh, Markov time uh, lx times so just a power of this uh, transfer matrix and then finally take the long uh, take the trace and in the CFT, understanding this uh, transfer matrix is just the expansion of some uh, CFT Hamiltonian evolving along the x direction. So <coughs> then the, it's a CFT defined on a finite uh, circle. So there's a, there's a ground state or there's a vacuum energy contribution. So and L0 and L0 bar, these are just uh, various uh, generators. And if, well, so that's a uh, very simple. So here, if Lx goes to infinite, and then of course we know that only the leading eigenvector of the transfer matrix would uh, contribute, and only that one would survive. And of course here, I expect that uh, there's no degeneracy in the transfer matrix if it's uh, near the critical, critical point, so in the scaling uh, limits. And uh, if only the CFT vacuum contributes, so the leading eigenvector of the transfer matrix in a CFT language is just the ground state of this CFT, so which is uh, denoted by this uh, CFT vacuum. So the eigenvalue of L0, so L0 acting on vacuum or L0 bar, so that just vanished. So therefore, the energy or the eigenvalue of H CFT acting on this uh, leading eigenvector, so it's just uh, this piece. So then the transfer, the uh, partition function on the torus or the periodic boundary condition along both directions have this uh, simple uh, result. So then what about uh, the client model? So here, uh, well, it, yeah. Is it possible to have some degeneracy of this transfer matrix? It's possible, but uh, if it's uh, near the CFT, uh, near the scaling limits or at a critical point, so typically well, here again, for simplicity, I, we can consider, for example, a uh, unitary CFT where only the CFT vacuum is the lowest end states and the CFT that's the unique, the unique ground state. Other ones are separated by this one by energy of one over L1. Okay. So there's no degeneracy here. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, so uh, then uh, if we want to calculate the same, uh, the, partic the partition function on the blind bottle, and one trick would be to do this as uh, what we call a cut and do. So the system is defined on this uh, manifold with uh, two Lx uh, lengths and uh, with this uh, L1 divided by half. And here I use arrow to identify the edges. So here upper and this two edges are identified. This one is not identified with this, but with some extra uh, reflection. So therefore the arrow is different. So the approach, well, you, you should uh, imagine that this is a tensor network. And what you do is first cut in the middle, exactly in the middle. And uh, then you have these two pieces, move this piece down. And then you see that this edge is not identified with this one, but uh, you have to uh, flip the lower one. And after flipping this, then you see that this one can be glued together with this one. So the tensor edges are actually connected. And additionally, this one is also identified with this one. So therefore, after this uh, cut and flip procedure, then you see that this is actually a cylinder, at least along the y direction. But the, this edge is now not identified with this edge, but this one actually come from, from the right-hand side. So therefore, you have some identification at uh, this uh, boundary and also some identifications at this boundary. So. In a tensor network uh, picture, you would see something like this. So there are some uh, long local uh, connections just at the boundary of your cylinder. So, uh, but this uh, 
system would have uh, length Lx and uh, width Ly because of the class uh, and uh, procedure. And now this uh, geometry is very suitable for, for doing the calculation. And uh, then you have this uh, partition function. And in this uh, way of seeing this partition function, you have just have the ordinary transfer matrix and it's periodic. And but at the boundary, we denote this uh, edge thing as uh, C. So this is uh, viewed as a boundary state. So just because you have to connect uh, these edges, so you can view that them as uh, as a uh, bell pairs in the quantum language. So uh, if this is a zero, then this is must be zero, this is one, and this must be one. So then you use this to denote the boundary uh, vectors and uh, the things in the middle are just uh, these uh, transfer matrices. And you, again, you have to take the power Lx and in the limit Lx goes to infinite again, you just pick up the leading eigenvector of uh, this transfer matrix, and uh, then of course the eigenvalue part uh, still factorizes out, and uh, then only the uh, leading eigenvector of the transfer matrix survive, and you just have to calculate the overlap of the leading eigenvector and uh, this uh, this uh, cross cap uh, boundary state, which is called C, and then you see that okay, so this piece is nothing but the universal entropy, which comes from this uh, division of uh, Division of uh, zk and zg. So here, numerically, what you can do is, for example, you can do is uh, pick up this uh, transfer matrix, and uh, then, for example, you can do DMRG or you can do uh, our method if it's uh, not a mission, and uh, then just pick up your leading eigenvector, and uh, then this k is just a uh, do this uh, contraction, and uh, well, if it's normalized, then this denominator is also not there. Then this is just uh, this uh, this piece and this piece and just a uh, long square. Okay, so uh, well, so maybe I forgot to uh, uh, mention that uh, when I was working on this, I didn't realize uh, this was already started in the in the CFD uh, community, and uh, but not too much in the colors matter context. And uh, it was uh, first uh, this type of uh, uh, cross cap uh, boundary in the CFT. It has uh, it was uh, started by Professor Ishbashi and uh, already in the boundary CFT uh, context. Uh, and uh, by the way, this also provides a way of calculating this uh, in the CFT uh, uh, approach. But it's not the only way of calculating this uh, universal uh, value k. Okay, so this is how we calculate that in uh, numerical purpose, and of course, we can also do a problem as uh, as uh, it's just the position function ratios where you have a, a, a positive weight in classical in classical statistical model. Okay, so uh, well, so I hope uh, this is uh, well. So this is the first part of my talk. So I hope uh, now it's clear that at the uh, in lens models, at it's a critical point, and if the critical point is described by CFT, you have some universal quantity which can be extracted quite easily. So basically, without extra extra effort, if you are doing as a network, you just need the eigenvector, which you need uh, for calculating many other quantities uh, anyway. Okay, so uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I, I don't understand why you don't this entropy. Yeah, so, uh, well, so uh, for um, uh, for critical theories, well, so this uh, comes from, there's a closely related, uh, closely related entropy, which is called the athletic Ludwig entropy. So that's uh, basically, well, if you imagine that it's an important chain or, or in a critical system with, with, one, with boundary, then you have a boundary entropy uh, from, uh, which is called uh, uh, athletic Ludwig entropy. So it also takes the form. Uh, it also takes the form of uh, constant uh, fraction in your free energy. So then it's called a constant contribution, which does not depend on the system size. So it's, uh, it's, uh, well, then it's also uh, invariant under scalar transformation. So then, uh, then. Uh, because of uh, this reason, but we also call it a time-water entropy. Yeah. So it really comes from 
the fact that uh, in this uh, manifold you have this it really comes from this uh, some kind of edge but uh, not really uh, but not really an edge okay so uh, now let me turn to the second part of my talk so uh, in the first part I showed that if it's critical and described by CFT then you have a universal uh, event and uh, then uh, I would like to go away from a critical point, and I want to show that this is also useful when you want to study uh, off critical system, but still in the scaling limit. And uh, this was uh, mostly motivated by this uh, curves uh, from this uh, calculation of uh, uh, easing model and cost model. So we have these lines, and then we know that for uh, Quite some uh, for uh, similar quantities in statistical physics, you can do a scaling analysis. And here, you would like we would like to show that it's possible to do uh, data types to extract uh, scaling dimensions of uh, fields. So using this approach, so also without uh, extra effort. Okay, so uh, here, second part, I want to show that uh, this type of entropy can be used also for systems. Uh, which are not uh, critical, but they are not too far from the critical point. So that the correlation S is still large and you can describe the system using a clear theory. And okay, so first uh, I need to introduce the notation. So I will use a Hamiltonian formulation. So first I have a Hamiltonian, which is a CFT. And uh, well, so if it's a quantum chain, then naturally this is just a Hamiltonian in the in the long wavelength limits, and if it's a classical uh, statistical model, this should be viewed as the uh, the the log of the transfer matrix. So, and this generates uh, evolution from the transfer matrix. And if it's off critical, then you have to introduce some uh, fields which are relevant in the renormalization group sense. And uh, this uh, scaling fields have a conformal weight, conformal dimension h, and here for simplicity, I assume that uh, h is equal to h bar. So if it's relevant, rg relevant in two dimensions, then this h must be smaller than one so that it's relevant and drives the system away from critical points. And uh, then CFD Hamiltonian is still this one. And uh, then, of course, you have to normalize this field in a proper way. And uh, G here is just a coupling constant of uh, the system. And well, again, for simplicity, uh, we can take the easing as an example. So for easing model, we have two types of uh, uh, relevant operators. So one is the so-called uh, energy or thermal perturbation. So this is basically the uh, field uh, or this is basically the perturbation which drives you away from a critical point. So you just uh, increase temperature. So G is slightly larger than GC, or G is smaller, slightly smaller than GC. Then this would drive you away from a critical point. So in this case, uh, this uh, scaling field actually is very simple. So it has a Majorana uh, mass. It can be viewed as a Majorana mass in the CFT. Uh, in, in CFT, and uh, here the scaling dimension or conformal, or, well, more precisely, conformal dimension here is uh, one half, so uh, fermion. And uh, the coupling constant here G is proportional to uh, the temperature difference in the classical statistical physics uh, context. And you can also consider a different uh, perturbation, which is the magnetic perturbation. So imagine that in the classical statistical model, you just add a field, small field. So then this allows you to calculate, for example, the uh, exponent uh, one over uh, eight. And in this case, it's just a sigma field, which is uh, which is uh, which is this uh, perturbation. And uh, this h, the conformal dimension is one over sixty, and uh, the the coupling constant is proportional to the strengths of your applied uh, magnetic field. So, okay, so that's uh, the setup. And I want to show that in this case, you also have a universal entropy, but uh, now it takes the form of a universal scaling function. And uh, well, the argument turns out to be extremely simple and you just need some, uh, just need some uh, dimensionality, uh, dimens uh, dimensional analysis. And here again, I consider Lx goes to infinite and Ly is finite. And in this case, you need to uh, count the dimension of this coupling constant. Actually, 
the dimension of this coupling constant depends on this, the conformal dimension of phi. And actually, it's quite easy to see that the uh, dimension of G is this Ly, because Ly is now the only length scale in your system. So it's a Ly of 2H. H is the conformal dimension minus 2. And uh, then you see that, okay, so if H is more than one, of course, if you increase system size, then of course the coupling uh, increases, which indicates that it's indeed a relevant condition. So then it means that it's better to work with the so-called uh, dimensionless coupling. So you multiply this coupling constant with this uh, Ly to the power of two minus two H. So then this would be a dimensionless uh, quantity. So it quantifies how large this uh, perturbation is. So that's actually quite nice because now I have two arguments telling you that why the theory only a dimensionless quantity only depends on this uh, dimensionless coupling. So first of all, I want to say that line water entropy now is a universal scaling function and there, I have two arguments. So first, if you consider this uh, ratio here, which I already just, uh, introduced, now you have to, this uh, ratio here must depend on the coupling, but uh, now it's better to write it as the dimensionless coupling as so, because it tells you how large this, how large, uh, how, how strong this uh, uh, perturbation is. And if you consider the partition function ratio, then of course we all know that partition function itself is uh, dimensionless and uh, the, ra the uh, ratio of two partition function is of course also dimensionless. And uh, well, left hand side is the entropy. And then we see that right hand side is dimensionless. And uh, then the climb water entropy can only depends on this uh, dimensionless uh, parameter. And uh, there's nothing else in the theory which is, uh, which, which is uh, dimensionless. So that's uh, the only possibility of getting uh, this uh, entropy. Okay, so uh, effectively, it means that uh, if you write your coupling, well, on the lattice, if you, for microscopic models, if you consider your perturbation times uh, this factor, then you can uh, plot, do all plot, uh, plot the results using this dimensionless quantity, then you would expect that this uh, entropy is uh, actually also dimensionless, so that's similar to other, uh, uh, data collapse uh, analysis. And the second argument is that, okay, so if you want to calculate this time of entropy using uh, the cross cap overlap, then basically you still need the uh, leading eigenvector of this transfer matrix, but now the transfer matrix depends on this uh, coupling S because it's a uh, massive, not uh, massless anymore. So the leading eigenvector, it's as a, wave function, normalized wave function or vector. So it only depends, also only depends on dimensionless uh, coupling itself. But the cross cap overlap, cross cap state is still this uh, bell product of bell pairs. So that's unchanged. So then you see that from right hand side, you see that uh, this quantity can only depends on this uh, dimensionless coupling. So based on these two arguments, you can easily see that uh, this quantity must, this, uh, line volta entropy must be a universal scaling function, which only depends on the dimensionless uh, coupling. And uh, okay, so then I want to uh, first show some uh, uh, theoretical uh, results. So first, for the easy CFT with a thermal perturbation. So uh, in this case, uh, we can actually calculate this, uh, this uh, line volta entropy. So this uh, universal scaling function analytically. Well, it's a, the result is simple, but uh, actually the derivation is uh, quite uh, not trivial. And actually, the whole uh, supplement material is uh, devoted to deriving this uh, single formula for a few pages. And uh, but this is nice, but of course you would like to know for other uh, theories whether uh, it's possible to derive this uh, uh, function. It turns out uh, it's not uh, that easy. And uh, but if uh, you want to uh, do some other uh, perturbation uh, calculations in field theory, one could think of expanding this uh, uh, line entropy as a series, and then you expect that if S equal to zero, of course, is critical, then the leading term is just a CFT value. And uh, then uh, second and third term, in principle, one could uh, develop a conformal perturbation theory to calculate the coefficient here. So basically, that uh, still leading terms can also be calculated. And uh, Another 
Another nice thing is that uh, in field theory or high energy field theory, high energy theory community, it turns out people have uh, noticed uh, this uh, progress and then they realize that actually for some uh, integrable field theories and lattice models, and one could calculate this, uh, well, for certain ones, one could calculate this, uh, this uh, actually cross cap overlap and uh, to get this result. But uh, to get this uh, KS, but uh, they have to represent this KS as a sub determinant. And uh, it, it's not a simple formula, but at least you can get, uh, you can plot this uh, function, uh, plot this function using uh, their result. So, okay, so uh, again, I want to first, uh, sh I want to show some uh, examples. And here, uh, the examples are now quantum chains. So here, this model is just the 1D quantum uh, easing chain and with uh, the patients. So the first part is of course critical. So uh, coupling constants are the same. And if you add the first term, that's, that corresponds to the transfer field in this context. And uh, in the classical statistical model, this would be just the thermal or energy conservation. And the second term corresponds to the magnetic uh, perturbation uh, sigma or the sigma fields. And uh, we would like to calculate this uh, climate of entropy this using this uh, using uh, this quantum Hamiltonian because uh, we have developed this so-called uh, continuous uh, matrix product operator formalism for calculating uh, for calculating the final temperature properties of uh, quantum Hamiltonians in one dimension. So that's a uh, of course all calculations can also be done uh, using the last four statistical model, and we have also confirmed that uh, you have data collapse there, so quite similar. Okay, so uh, numerical results. So first, uh, we just pick up the first term, then because we know the exact uh, scaling function, and uh, then left-hand side, we have this uh, exact results. Then you plot your entropy, this uh, rate, partition function ratio, or the cross cap overlap, actually, in our calculation, as a function of a dimensionless uh, coupling constant in the lattice model context, and uh, then you see that see that for different uh, final temperatures, they basically collapse on the same curve and as we, we would expect. So then they also cross at this uh, tra uh, transition uh, at uh, the critical point S to zero. So if one could, in this case, it's nice because we have the full, uh, we have the full uh, scaling function. And for other cases, if you can calculate uh, this uh, KS, as a serious expansion, the first a few uh, coefficients in the, the first a few coefficient here responds to the derivative of uh, derivative of this uh, curve uh, near the transition point. So, in principle, this uh, k1 and k2 are still can still be extracted and compared with uh, theory, theory, theory calculations. Yeah. So how does uh, how do those s1 and s2 relate to h1 and h2? Uh, that's a good point. So here in principle, this uh, well, first of all, S one is related to this H one times uh, the systems uh, the final temperature beta. But of course, you for lattice model, of course, you have to be a bit careful because uh, this uh, operator has to be normalized in the field theory sense. So two point correlation function. So at large distance, uh, they should approach uh, well times uh, this distance to a certain power, this should approach one in order to be comparable with uh, field theory calculations. You have to normalize that. And additional factor is that this model, it has a velocity, the velocity is not equal to one, which is uh, assumed to be the case in field theory. So this S1 is uh, related to this, but with some prefactors. If you really want to compare that with uh, field theory calculation, but of course, if you don't, well, if, if you don't care about uh, this comparison with field theory calculation, Still, you can drop out these uh, factors. Just consider S1 is uh, equal to H1 times uh, beta to the power is uh, 2H minus 2 minus 2H. And uh, then, uh, then you would get the, the data collapse. And you have to rescale that to, to, get, the, to, to, to get this uh, exact result. So actually, it's quite simple. So just have to consider this times uh, Beta, so the shorter uh, distance, shorter length in the, in the pass integral uh, picture to some power, and this power is precisely the related is precisely precisely relates to the scaling the conformal dimension of the perturbation. So therefore, in practice, if you don't know the uh, 
uh, the couple more dimension of this perturbation, what you have to do is to tune this uh, power there to get data maps, and this allows you to extract the the uh, couple dimension of your perturbation. Oh, sorry, which power? So if I don't know the yeah, power yeah. of uh, well, in this case, we know that uh, this guy has h equal to one half. So therefore, I could choose s equal to beta times uh, h one times beta, and the power of beta is just one. And that's because here the couple more dimension of this perturbation is just one half. That's so the the power to the beta. Yes. And if you don't know, then you have to tune this to get uh, data claps. If it's not chosen properly, then you don't get data claps. <coughs> Okay, so then uh, second case is the magnetic perturbation, and uh, then just pick up the second term, and uh, then in this case you see that again we also have uh, data collapse, and even though we don't know the analytical formula for this uh, entropy. And uh, okay, so by the way, I should also mention that it's quite interesting that uh, the uh, entropy. So in the order of the phase, actually it's two, and this precisely corresponds to the uh, ground state degeneracy. And because there are two degenerate ground states in the order phase, and it's the disorder phase that's a uh, response to one. And uh, okay, so uh, okay, so for magnetic perturbation, and there's no degeneracy because uh, the states are these are polarized, uh, and the symmetry is uh, broken. Uh, uh, is already uh, broken by hand in the Hamiltonian. Okay, now a second example is this uh, three state uh, quantum clock chain. And uh, then here you also tune this uh, transverse field, and uh, that corresponds to the thermal perturbation. And in this case, we don't know the uh, formula for the, uh, for the uh, scaling function, but still you just uh, make the plot using the prediction. And uh, this S is again. Uh, H times beta to a certain power, which corresponds to the, uh, the uh, thermal perturbation in CFT, then you see there's a perfect uh, collapse in, the, in this uh, in the type of function. And here, at three, again, it corresponds to the ground, uh, ground state degeneracy due to uh, some breaking. So it's a paramagnetic phase, so three states, and uh, in the disordered phase, uh, there's only one state. And the crossing in the middle, that's precisely the phase transition point, which is uh, predicted by uh, by CFT. Okay, so, well, so uh, based on this uh, numerical results, we, we actually have one uh, interesting conjecture. So a bit similar to uh, Affleck's Ludwig's uh, G theorem, where the boundary entropy uh, is related to the uh, RG flow. And here, one interesting observation was that, okay, so here, maybe this example, you see that the entropy actually monotonically uh, decreases in this case. And uh, if there is a symmetry breaking, and uh, well, so, but if you consider eating chain with uh, magnetic uh, perturbation, then actually the uh, entropy is uh, maximized at the critical point. So it's uh, then starting from this uh, maximum, it also want to. Monotonically uh, decreases. And uh, our conjecture is that, uh, well, so now the conjecture has uh, two statements. One is that uh, if you have uh, this uh, phase diagram with two phases separated by a CFT and uh, one side A phase and B phase, so they are separated by this uh, critical point. And here S is smaller than zero, so the dimension is coupling, and here S is larger than zero. So if A phase has a broken uh, discrete symmetry like easing Z2 or Z3, and this one doesn't break any symmetry, then we guess that we conjecture that uh, Ks monotonically uh, decreases. And if uh, both of if A and B both do not uh, break uh, symmetry, then we expect that the entropy is maximized at the critical point. And uh, that's our conjecture. And uh, but uh, it's not like the Affleck Ludwig entropy, which is related to the RG flow uh, at boundary. So here we expect that uh, it's related to the RG flow uh, in the bar. So, so again, again, uh, maybe this uh, complements uh, some logical so C theorem, where C can only decrease in the trajectory of the RG flow. 
Okay, so this uh, brings me to the summary. So first, uh, well, so I think the results itself is very simple. So just one sentence summary. So climb bot entropy is universal for 2D critical phases described by CFGs. And that's the first part. And second part, this entropy is also universal in the sense of the scaling function. So for all critical phases uh, nearby a uh, couple more critical points. And of course, uh, we have more questions in this uh, direction. So first, uh, we would like to know whether this uh, K theorem, so relation between uh, Lambert entropy and RG flow is correct or not. So whether we can do a perturbative or non-perturbative non uh, proof or disproof would be nice. And additionally, for the classical, for the classical Q stage post model, or I could also show one plot from the schema half XXD chain. One could see that uh, the marginal term actually affects this uh, entropy. So it's no longer universal and there are some corrections. And how to calculate this correction in the fair theory uh, language, that's still not so clear. At least has not been done yet. And we would like to know that. And if that's, uh, if there's a nice uh, expression for this correction, then maybe it helps us to uh, pin down the KT uh, transition points, which would be important to yeah. And of course, then uh, based on this uh, geometric uh, understanding, we expect that uh, it could, uh, this entropy can also be generalized to higher dimensions where, uh, for example, 3D is a model. And in that, for this uh, critical series, actually, uh, CFD is not that uh, powerful because we cannot predict uh, much. And uh, but here, based on this cross cap overlap, could uh, imagine that put the system on a different uh, topological manifold, and uh, then you may expect that again this uh, relevant perturbation, well, the coupling constant. If you write it as a as a dimensionless coupling, you can expect that uh, some wave fun partition function ratio would only would uh, only depend on the dimensionless. Uh, uh, scaling parameter and uh, some kind of uh, scale universal scaling function is still possible. So I think it's a, a promising direction. And uh, well, so let me also thank my collaborators. So first, uh, Wei Tang. So he gives his PhD at Peking uh, University and uh, co supervised by Lei Wang and uh, from uh, Institute of Physics and uh, also me. And uh, currently, he's a postdoc at the uh, Ghent University working with uh, Frank Verstaat and uh, Luke Parkman. And uh, so he did quite some works on this uh, climb of entropy at the critical points. And uh, then the second part, universal scaling function. So the leading author is uh, Yoshui Zhang. He did his PhD also with uh, Lei Wang at the uh, Institute of Physics in Beijing. And he will move to Munich and work with me as a postdoc. And uh, Anton is a bachelor student in my group, Ba Chen. Uh, also, spent a uh, few years at in my group and and he's a student of uh, Pao Shan and uh, I joined Liao did the uh, simulations on the state post model and uh, also from the Institute of Physics in Beijing. And with this I also thank you for your uh, intro, for your attention. Thank you. Okay, do we have any uh, questions? Yes. Uh, that's actually a good point. So, uh, from this principle, yes. Maybe I should show this uh, this uh, thing here. So one could one could imagine that you first uh, do tensor normalization for the bulk part, and then finally, uh, then you just have one uh, column in the middle, and then contact the remaining uh, side. But uh, we haven't really done that uh, by ourselves, so I don't know the performance. So if we want to do like this one to higher. Uh, in higher dimensions, uh, that would be much harder. But uh, if it can be formulated 
parts of the Pachi Pantry ratio, and it may be more shallow with the cross on that, which I will decide. Thank you. We don't need to, it's a ratio, so therefore, it's just a uh, to sample, uh, to sample and calculate the probability ratios that would be sufficient. That's actually almost for what we did for the content chain of classical. I think we didn't do that, but uh, for example, uh, maybe I show what we got on the classical uh, one, the content chain. So XXE chain one dimension. So uh, that was actually calculated using uh, Palo. So for that case, we know, well, again, this shows that. Uh, so it's going to have Heisberg chain, XD, XD chain, so delta equals one, that's the Heisberg point where you have a marginal term. And uh, this model is also nice in the sense that you have uh, the exact results from the magnification radius for line parameter. So then we calculate uh, this uh, ratio using more power, then it uh, agrees quite well with uh, the results up to this uh, Heisberg point where you have a marginal term. And this was really aggregated. Yes. And maybe one more thing which I didn't mention, I didn't pay uh, spend much time to talk about is uh, for content chain, what you can do is to, is to just use uh, this, just use this result. It means that. You could also interpret this uh, petite function as a as a quantum Hamiltonian along the uh, vertical direction and more uh, along the x direction. So it means that you can just pick up your quantum Hamiltonian on a on a ring, so final size uh, ring, so calculate its ground state, and then just calculate that with the, the overlap with uh, this cross cap stage, and it turns out it also works quite well. So, yeah. so uh, to me, it's, uh, the climb doctor entropy it reminds me the sent proposed symmetry defect. Uh, so we can also estimate this quantum dimension and total quantum dimensions uh, using the symmetry defect. And then it seems like a calculate, I mean, the, the, the concept looks is, I mean, similar. Is it, is it correct? Or can you comment? Uh, okay, so for partition functions, uh, well, we have also done some work on um, insert, well, in the, I think for that, it's better to use the uh, earlier, the really the client model uh, partition function picture. So you have yeah. some stuff here. Then in principle, in the test network, you should, I should be able to move this guy one, uh, one row lower because it's a, uh, because uh, nine bottle, there's no real boundary. So yeah. every column can be viewed as a boundary. So this uh, pulling through condition of this uh, object uh, is also a self consistent condition in certain, in, in, in uh, 2D tensor network uh, representing, uh, representing, uh, representing uh, lattice distribution yeah. of uh, CFT. So for easing and pause, we have derived. Uh, self conditions and how this guys uh well so imagine that you insert another defect like uh, sigma fields and how it uh, how you can move one through the other one so i think for easing and pause we have to then spend this already so you can actually even project out a single characters in the cft in this case thank you by combining this with other defect of the of the cft on the lattice Other values, 
Yeah, so uh, here we want to have some universal results. So we would like to avoid, for example, boundaries and uh, this uh, strong. Otherwise, we have uh, surface uh, energies which are not universal and depend on this, depend on microscopic model. And in two dimensions, I'm not aware of other many folks. Uh, well, you can make, maybe have a torus system where this one's with small holes. But uh, the calculation in CFT turned out to be much more complicated. And of course, also not very practical in the environment setting. So, I think the time bottle is probably the first step. Okay, uh, so then no other in 3D there are many, but I don't know which one to start with. And also their theory calculation is uh it's uh, very complicated. I, I have not seen much hope of uh, deriving analytical results. But this is the at least first step towards that direction. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I have two questions. So uh, the first one regarding this uh, computing the ratio of Z um, using Monte Carlo. So you mean that because we want to just take the same uh, configuration, but just the uh, apply the different say um, boundary conditions and compute uh, estimate these uh, their the photon vectors and then just only store that uh, ratio. Yeah, uh, for the quantum check, yes. Uh, in the classical model, of course, we can use uh, this. That's already fine. But uh, the, the problem is that uh, the system size would be different because here this would have two Lx and uh, Ly half. It turns out it's more convenient to use uh, this. Uh, it's uh, more convenient to use this uh, cross cap uh, picture. So because the system size is uh, precisely the same. So both Lx and Ly. So then you just uh, sample just uh, uh, sample the system and then you just need to take into account this extra connections and uh, basically that's uh, how we calculate using one power. I see. And the second question is is that it also seems a bit related to the uh, having some different boundary conditions in the context of the many body channels. Is that also related? Uh, this I don't see a direct uh, relation because uh, many body channel number would be the two plus one dimensional case. So ah. here, this is a uh, either one plus one quantum or two dimensional classical. I see. Okay. After making a relevant perturbation of the system, the is a cross cap state is still described by the Eastman system. Uh, no, no, it's not written in terms of uh, the Ishbashi. The Ishbashi construction is a proper superposition of uh, primary mm -hmm. states, so yeah. that's quite special and uh, that's only valid for, for the CFT. And but on the lattice, this uh. Well, based on this uh, cut and food picture, this uh, product of uh, product of bare states seems to uh, seems to be the most natural choice. But uh, if we are doing this calculation for quantum chain, we also notice that uh, sometimes uh, this depends on the system size. So sometimes system size divided by four would work, but uh, divided by two not work, and gives you some vanishing value because of some lattice uh, issues. Yeah. Do we have any other questions from the audience? Seems not. So then let us thank Professor Tu for his excellent presentation.